Hello and welcome back. Today's lesson is on adding and subtracting signed numbers. We spent a little time last lesson learning what signed numbers were all about. And even though we have a calculator, it's important to learn how the addition and subtraction processes work with signed numbers as well. When we add signed numbers, it's really like putting ingredients into a bowl, just as if you were, say, making chocolate chip cookies. Our first example is 5 plus 2. And I know that you know the answer is 7. But what we want to do is just sort of think about how this 7 comes about. When you have 5, this is a 5 that's positive. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 positives. And we put them all into the bowl. Adding means put more stuff into the bowl. And since we're adding two positives, we look at the bowl and see that there are now 7 positives. So the final result, 5 plus 2, is equal to 7, which you already knew. But maybe you didn't know what negative 4 plus negative 6 was. If we use the bowl, it's pretty easy. The bowl begins with 4 negatives. 1, 2, 3, 4. Plus means add, means dump more stuff into the bowl. So we'll put in 6 more negatives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So now when you look at the bowl, we have 10 negatives. So negative 4 plus negative 6 will give us negative 10. A bowl with some negatives in it, and then adding more negatives to the bowl gives us a great big bowl of negatives. So whenever you're adding two numbers with the same sign, we start just by adding the numbers as if they were positive. We ignore the signs for a little while. And then the answer has the same sign that the two add-ins had to begin with. All right, so it's your job to try the next two on your own without your calculator. Imagine the bowl. Pause the recording and come back when you're ready. OK, so negative 8 plus negative 12. There are 8 negatives in a bowl, and then we add in 12 more negatives. That should give us 20 negatives in the bowl. For number 2, we have 20 negatives in a bowl, and then we add in 70 more negatives. And that should give us 90 negatives in the bowl. So in general, a negative plus a negative gives us more negatives. Of course, we can do this on your calculator. We have a tendency when we write to not make a distinction between a negative sign and a subtraction symbol. That's one of the reasons why we put parentheses around negative numbers, just so we don't mistakenly misread what we've written. Your calculator can't do that. Subtraction is an operation that's done to two numbers, right? 5 subtract 4, whereas negative is something you can do to 1. You can take the opposite of a single number. So your calculator needs two separate keys. The negative key is way down here at the bottom next to the Enter. It looks like this. So before we had, let's find that problem. Oops, hold on. Negative 8 plus negative 12. So here's negative 8 plus and then negative 12. And of course, the answer is negative 20. But what I wanted to point out was where this negative is. You see how it's really short and it's raised up just a little bit. If we said 5, subtract 4, see the subtraction symbol is much larger and it's more centered up, to that, up and down. All right. So if we have a negative number, we need to use the negative key. Otherwise, the calculator is going to try to subtract. What happens if we try to add numbers that have different signs? Well, we can still use the bowl approach, because adding just means dump stuff into a bowl. But with different signs, we have to remember that whenever you add a number to its opposite, you end up with 0. 5 plus negative 5 gives us 0. 3 plus negative 3 gives us 0. Some number 
plus the opposite of that number will always give us 0. In particular, 1 plus negative 1 is going to give us 0. So here's how it works with the bowl. Let's see. Our next example is negative 7 plus 4. So the bowl has six, excuse me, seven negatives in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to add, so dump some more stuff in, a four. But this four is positive. One, two, three, four positives. Every time we have a positive and a negative, it's like a positive one plus a negative one, and this gives us zero. So we circle them so we can see the big fat zeros here. So what's really in the bowl are four zeros and then three remaining negatives. Well, the four zeros don't really count. So there are three negatives left in the bowl. Negative seven plus four is negative three. Let's try again. Three plus a negative eight. All right, so we have three positives to put in the bowl. Add means dump more stuff in, and we're going to dump in eight negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're looking for pairs of opposite signs to make zeros. And when we're done, what's left over in the bowl are five negatives. So three plus a negative eight gives us negative five. So as you can see, the question here is really not whether or not we have to put everything into a bowl and look at it. We can do this mentally as long as we ask ourselves, which is going to be more in the bowl? Will there be more positives in the bowl or more negatives in a bowl? Yeah, let's slide up a little bit. Try that again. So if we want to predict the sign of the sum, we ask ourselves, will there be more positives or more negatives? And since we're just looking at the size of the number and not its sign, this is exactly the same as asking which number has the larger absolute value. To figure out how many of the dominant group remain, all we have to do is subtract. Let's go back and look at that in a second. So even though the question we just did, there it is, was three plus a negative eight, the answer had a five in it because three of these things canceled out. So really what we did was we looked at this and we said, aha, there are more negatives than positives in the bowl. The answer is going to be negative. And then I look at the eight and I look at the three and I subtract them. That's where the five comes from. Okay, let's try some others. We'll do two together and then you can do two on your own. So here we go, negative eight plus 17. More positives in the bowl or more negatives in the bowl? More positives. So just to make the point, I'm going to put this down here so that we remember we said more positives. How many more positives? Well, for that, I have to subtract. 17 minus 8 is 9. Number 5, 20 plus a negative 70. More positives in the bowl or more negatives in the bowl? More negatives. How many more negatives? We have to subtract. Look at the 70, subtract 20, and we end up with 50. So we're always subtracting the big absolute value minus the small absolute value. Right? Forget about the signs for a second and just subtract the way you normally would. Big number minus small number. Okay, you try the next two. Pause the recording. Come back when you're ready. Let's see how you've done. Negative 12 plus a 5. Definitely more negatives in the bowl than positive, so the answer is going to be negative. And then we just think to ourselves, 12 minus 5, that would be 7, because we know some canceling is going to happen inside the bowl. 
For number 7, we have 42 plus negative 10. Definitely more positives in the bowl than negatives. To find out how many are left after all the canceling, ignore the signs and just subtract. 42 minus 10 gives us 32. Now, of course, you don't have to write the pluses over here. I just did that so that we would emphasize that there were positives left in the bowl. Let's check one of these on our calculator. Which one should we do? How about, let's say, number 6. Negative 12 plus 5. And there we go, negative 7. And hopefully you checked them all anyway. So how is subtracting sign numbers any different? Let's see. There are some rules for subtracting sign numbers, which you can memorize. Or we can make some pattern links and see how subtraction relates to addition. I'll let you choose what you like. I'll give them both to you. If you wanted to think about a rule, then we could say that subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. We already know that 7 plus 4 is 11, but it might not look like 7 minus a negative 4 should be 11. Of course, with our calculator, 7 subtract negative 4. See the difference between the subtraction sign and the negative sign? Is 11. Okay, well somehow these are the same. Why should they be the same? Well, let's see. Let's think about money for a second. If I wanted to give you more spending power, there are two ways I could do it. The first thing that I could do would be to add, right, give you more money, $4. If I gave you $4, you have more spending power. Or I could take away, subtract, a negative. I could take away one of your bills. If I offer to pay one of your bills for you, I haven't actually given you any money, but you have more money to spend because you don't have to pay that bill. And so that's why subtracting a negative actually gives you a larger result. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. All right, you try the next one. Let's see what we have. Negative 10 plus 6. Well, this is easy because this is the bowl we're just adding. There are 10 negatives in the bowl and then 6 positives in the bowl. We see which things create 0 pairs. And of course, there are more negatives in the bowl than positive. As a matter of fact, there are 4 negatives left in the bowl when we're finished. Negative 10 minus a negative 6. Negative 10 minus a negative 6 gives us exactly the same answer. All right, if you wanted to remember another rule, we could talk about what happens when you subtract a positive, because we already know what happens when you subtract a negative, and this is the only other option. If you subtract a positive, it is exactly the same as adding a negative. Nine plus a negative five, we can use the bowl. There are nine positives in a bowl. Add in five negatives to the bowl. And when we finish, there are four positives left in the bowl after all of the zero pairs are made. Nine minus five, well, you already knew that, that's four. The point here is that the answers are the same. Subtracting a positive number is exactly the same as adding a negative number. The second one, you might not be so sure about. But if we came over here where the addition is, we could use the bowl again. Negative 3 plus negative 8. So I probably should have put some parentheses in here so it looks like a negative 8. We have three negatives in the bowl and then add in eight more negatives. Should give us a bowl containing 11 negatives. Negative 3 minus 8 gives us negative 11 over here on the left hand side as well. So subtracting a positive is the same 
as adding a negative. Now me, I'm not a big fan of rules. And I like thinking about the bowl. I like addition much more than I like subtraction. So if you look at both of the rules that we just had, we could combine them into one great big giant overall rule. Subtracting a number is the same as adding the opposite of that number. Right? When we subtracted a negative, we thought about it as adding a positive. When we subtracted a positive, we thought about it as adding a negative. And then once we've created an addition problem, we can use the bowl. This ability to rewrite a subtraction problem as an addition problem is really handy, uh, not just for stuff like this. You'll see that we use it a lot as we finish this course. So it's a good idea to practice. Let's look here at number 8. We have negative 50 minus 20. To write this equivalent addition problem, the first number stays the same. Let's do this up here. That first number never changes. So we're still going to start off with negative 50. Instead of subtracting, we are going to add. And instead of this positive 20, we will have a negative 20. So our job here, hold on. The formatting of this table is causing a little bit of an issue. So I'm going to pause this recording for just a second and change it on your screen. It might flicker and uh, reposition itself. So don't be surprised when this happens. OK, let's try this again. What I meant to point out was that we took this subtraction sign and changed it into an addition sign. And we took this 20 and turned it into a negative 20. So we add the opposite. Once we've got things written as an addition problem, then it's easy to calculate. 50 negatives in a bowl, dump in 20 more negatives. The bowl contains 70 negatives. Check this both ways on our calculator. Negative 50 plus negative 20 gives us negative 70. Look back at the original problem. Negative 50 minus 20 still gives us negative 70. OK, your job is to try the next three. Pause the recording and come back when you're ready. All right, let's see how things worked. I'm going to erase this so that I have some room down below. And let's see what you did. 15 minus a negative 5. First number stays the same. Subtraction changes to an addition. Second number becomes the opposite. And the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. Ha! Ah, you know that 15 plus 5, well, that's just 20. Double check on your calculator. 15 minus negative 5. And sure enough, 20 is exactly what we wanted. Let's try again. First number stays the same, negative 4. Subtraction changes to an addition. Negative 4 minus a negative 4. Second number, we need the opposite. The opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. Negative 4 plus positive 4 is 0 because those are opposites. Start with the original problem. Negative 4 minus a negative 4 is ha, 0. All right, last one. 28 minus 35. First number stays the same. Subtraction turns into an addition. Second number was 35. We would like its opposite, negative 35. And honestly, this is where most people make their mistakes. They mentally subtract the other way and don't realize that they're taking away more than what they started with. This answer should be negative, and we can clearly see that after we've rewritten it as an addition problem because, of course, there are more negatives in the bowl. 
How many more negatives in the bowl? Um, I'm thinking it's negative 7. So let's check. 28 minus 35, a lovely negative 7. All right then. So let's see when we might be using this. And let's start off with the bank balance. So Keenan wrote a check for $345, and after he did that, his bank balance was negative $438. What was his bank balance before he wrote the check? As always, I advise starting off with a word equation. We know that the original balance minus the check amount will give us the new balance. And then we just fill in everything that we know. The original balance, uh, I don't know what that is, so we're going to call that x. Minus the check amount was for $345. And the new balance was negative 438. We've seen problems like this before. We know that to isolate this x, we have to undo this subtraction. To undo a subtraction, we add. What we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. Right? The point of adding that 345 was to make a big fat zero right here and leave x all by itself. And so x is now, oh gosh, let's check, negative 438 plus 345 gives us a negative 93. What does that tell us? Well, before he wrote the check, Keenan was already overdrawn. His bank balance was negative $93. Does that make sense to us? Let's check it out negative ninety three dollars that's our original bank balance and then if you write another check for three hundred forty five negative ninety three minus three hundred forty five now we are seriously overdrawn by four hundred thirty eight dollars and that works out pretty well let's try another Oh. I guess not quite yet. In the homework tonight, you will see several problems that ask you to talk about a change over time. And when you calculate a change over time, we have to do this in a very specific manner. We need to subtract the original value from the current value. So we always start off with the current value. And subtract off the original value. If your change is positive, then whatever quantity you had is increasing over time. If the change is negative, then the quantity you had was decreasing over time. So in this next example, we're actually going to do it two ways, just so you can see how you might use this change. So I'm going to split the paper right about here. All right, let's try. We could start talking about the change right from the beginning. Change is equal to the original minus the current. Last night, the temperature was 3 degrees Celsius. Since then, the temperature has dropped 10 degrees Celsius. What's the current temperature? So this drop of 10 degrees, the change was a negative 10. The original, that's what happened last night, is 3. And the current temperature is what we don't know. Ah, clearly I have not had my coffee this morning. I got this wrong. It's not original minus current. Sorry about that. It goes the other way around. It is the current minus the original. 
All right, try again. The negative 10 is still the change. Current temperature, we don't know. And then last night, the original temperature, that's 3. All right, so to get this x all by itself, we of course need to undo this subtraction. We do it by adding 3 to both sides and see what we get. Big fat 0 right here. X is all by itself on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we have negative 10 plus a 3, which we could do on our calculator. But when we get done, we see that the answer is negative 7 and realize that we could have done this in our heads anyway. 10 negatives in a bowl, put three, negative, uh, three positives in, see what cancels out, and we are left with seven negatives in the bowl. The current temperature is negative 7. Watch your units, these are degrees Celsius. Okay, that's one way we could have done this problem. The other way would have been to tr actually track the time and the changes as they happen. So we could have talked about last night plus the change equals now the current temperature. So last night, the temperature was 3 degrees, plus this change is a negative 10. And the current temperature, we don't know. 3 plus a negative 10, negative 7. Again, don't forget, degrees Celsius. As long as we're talking about temperature scales, we should probably make sure that you are familiar with all of them. There are four different types. Whoops, sorry about that. There is the Fahrenheit scale, which is a non-metric temperature scale. And its scientific counterpart, the Rankine scale. So this is also non-metric. The Celsius scale is metric. We use that for everyday purposes and its scientific counterpart is the Kelvin scale, which is also metric. Absolute zero is the theoretical temperature at which molecular motion stops. Calculations done with the Rankine scale or with the Kelvin scale make use of this idea. Rankine and Kelvin are both what we call absolute temperature scales. So if you were to look at a Rankine thermometer or a Kelvin thermometer, the very bottom of the thermometer would have a zero at it. Right? A Fahrenheit thermometer or a Celsius thermometer has the zero somewhere in the middle and positive and negative temperatures are allowed. If absolute zero is at the bottom, all the rest of your temperatures are positive. We use the Kelvin scale and the Rankine scale whenever we are calculating um, temperature changes due to pressure and volume changes, whenever you are calibrating, sorry, I meant calculating the performance rating of equipment that is temperature sensitive. So Rankine and Celsius will become important to you as well. Okay, back to our notes. An absolute temperature scale, we said, was a scale that has zero at the bottom. And the zero at the bottom is absolute, val uh, absolute zero. Right, with a Fahrenheit or Celsius scale, if the temperature is zero degrees outside, it doesn't mean that there's no heat. You might think it does, or think it feels that way, but it can get colder. With an absolute scale, if the temperature is zero, there is no more heat. No molecules can move. So, let's probably make that note up here. This is an absolute temperature scale. And so is the Kelvin.
we don't normally get temperatures given to us in Kelvin or degrees Rankine, so we have to convert. To convert a temperature from Rankine to Fahrenheit, we use the formula F equals R minus 460. F equals R minus 460. All right. Liquid R22 refrigerant boils at negative 41 degrees Fahrenheit. We would like to know this value on the Rankine scale. So F, that's our Fahrenheit temperature, is negative 41. The value on the Rankine scale, we don't know, so we can just call it R. And minus 460 is part of our formula. We need to get R all by itself. To undo the subtraction of 460, we will add 460. And we do this to both sides of the equation. Big fat zero over here, just like we expected. So now R is all alone. On the left hand side, we have negative 41 plus 460, which is 419. So what this tells us is that negative 41 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 419 degrees Rankine. Okay, so good luck with your homework tonight, and we'll be talking. Take care. Bye-bye.